The story I'm about to tell is one of many that guys literally end their lives over. And this is not a story that I've spoken about on my channel before. I've spoken about a lot of brutal, heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching stories. But this is probably one of those ones that some of you guys can relate to. And if you do, if you relate to this one, you know the pain. There was once a girl that I liked and she started liking me first, right? This girl, it was in around high school, right? She started liking me and then I ended up liking her and we connected and we clicked hard speaking every single day, go, like going out and hanging out together in school all the time. And the amount of texts, like, you know, when you have that one person you come back to and you're so ready to text every single day, you just want to text and text and be with all the time and just speak to like that is your person. It's your person and you're pouring your heart out and you're watching movies together and you're laughing and you're thinking about what your kid's name is going to be like all this sort of stuff that, you know, ends up being meaningless. But in the moment, we think it means everything. And that's exactly what happened to me. We are speaking to this girl and everything and telling her like everything about me. My whole life was just open to her. And the relationship was going phenomenally. We were together for a long time. And then the days started passing and passing and passing. And eventually I ran out of stories to tell, to tell the girl. I ran out of stories to tell. I ran out of things to say to her. I ran out of the, the things to tell her that's new about my day. I ran out of things as it would. There's only so many things you can do in life. There's only so many things that you can tell the girl. Yeah, I did this today. I did this today. I did this today. Or this is something about my past. There's only so much a person can learn about you. And slowly, something started diminishing. The days would go by and it would take her longer for her to respond to me. Before she would respond in seconds. And then it became minutes and then tens of minutes, and then she'd respond in a couple of hours. And instead of talking throughout the day all the time, we'd talk every couple of hours. And I knew, I always knew something was up. There's, there's always a gut feeling in my body that tells me something is about to happen with relationships. Guys, you have this shit built into your, your evolutionary code. When something is up, you can tell and you can feel something is up. Literally feel that something is going on. And one day, one of my friends, he said, yo, bro. Are you and X, like, are you and the girl still together? And I'm like, yeah, man, why? What's up? And he just looks at me. He's like, oh, man. Oh, man. And then he proceeds to tell me that he saw her and another guy, like, you know, on Snapchat stories, when you, like, post stories, he saw, like, a story, basically, of her and him sitting together on, like, a little bench, and they were just out alone. And that, like, twisted and tore my heart into pieces. I confronted the girl and there's like, she kept on denying it at first, but then of course she just says, yeah, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I don't really care about you anymore. I'm seeing this other guy. This other guy was like a gangster, literally. He was just a gangster. He was just one of those fucking assholes who just sells drugs, does all that shit. And I was like, I was a bit of a loser, but this guy was something else. And something that I realized the, the thing that really destroyed all of this was the fact that I had nothing, no more mystery. And women, especially this one, <laughs> hop around to where the mystery is. Let me teach you something about women, bro. Women have creativity and imagination far better than any of us do. And I know you may think this is a weird thing to say that women are more creative and imaginative than we are. But trust me, this is the truth. The way women think and o overthinking especially is such a female characteristic. And this applies to dating. This applies to relationships and being with someone, being in, in any kind of close relationship, whether it be marriage, whether it be like date, like dating for the first couple of months, there there's always a level of fantasizing. When you tell a woman every single thing about your life, which is what I did day in, day out, day in, day out, I told her every single thing about my life, where I was, what I was doing at this time, what I would be doing at X time, where I was, I'd send her pictures. You don't give the woman space to fantasize about what you could be doing. I'm gonna going. I'm gonna give you an example about a video game character, or just think of any video game character that you like. This video game character may even have been a villain, but think of a mysterious video game character that oh, like so many people like. What is good about them? It's the fact that there's mystery. And the thing is about humans. Humans are innately attracted. 
attracted to mystery. They are innately attracted to something they cannot solve. It's like you trying to dig and dig, dig deeper into something, but you cannot find, you can't find anything. Humans are innately attracted to all kinds of mystery. And when you tell the woman, everything about your life you don't give them the space to fantasize and create their own theories about what you may doing you may be doing and women know how to think so well in the way that makes them attracted to what you could like say for example you're just not you're not even doing anything right you're just you're you're in bed having a call with a friend the woman might think like you're out in some business meeting doing some weird like sophisticated important shit and then you just go up there and ruin it for her by calling her and telling her the last the things you did for the last three hours women want the space to fantasize they like thinking about what you could be doing they like thinking about realities that aren't real this is a, a female characteristic it's a female brain thing they like thinking about what may be true they are so creative about what may be happening but then you come over here and tell her yeah we've just been playing warzone with the boys and then you completely obliterate obliterate all sense of mystique about you. There's nothing mysterious about you. You're not that cool video game character who nobody knows the past of. You're not that cool video game character who's masked, who you don't know his identity, who you don't know what his face looked like. You're no longer that cool person. The cool factor comes from the, the factor of mystery. Mystery has always been regarded as something cool. Cool because we don't understand and we want to dig. Humans are innately attracted to this and this specifically. It is things that we cannot have. When you chase something and it runs away from you, what happens? What happens? You chase harder. You can see this with animals. They chase. Dogs chase. Cats chase. They chase things that are almost within their grasp but they just can't have it people like to chase especially women they like to chase their own imagination and then here comes you just ruining all of it and telling her about your entire day now this may be seen as something that's not you know authentic i'm not telling you to lie and say you're not doing things that you are or you're doing things that you aren't i will never ever tell you to lie on this channel or be a bullshit kind of person but you need to understand that revealing all of your secrets, revealing everything of your, that you're doing throughout the day just ruins all kind. Why are you shooting yourself in the foot? Genuinely, why are you shooting yourself in the foot? It's such an attractive trait to be mysterious and to have things that are going on in your life that people don't know about. That's why I always say work in the shadows, work in silence, grind in silence, do whatever it is in silence. You think I'm an open book by telling you this, by telling my addictions, by telling you my past... There are so many things you don't know about me, bro. There are so many things you don't know about me. And I'm not trying to treat you like, you know, I'm trying to attract a woman or anything. But you understand the point. Now, the way to be authentic with this, the way to be truly mysterious in a way that doesn't come off as douchebaggy. Because if you purposely reply six hours later to her text, she's going to know you're being a dickhead. But if you're genuinely busy every single time, that's when it works. That's when she'll actually think, okay, what, what's he doing? Could he be in a call with like the business partners maybe he's speaking to a woman and i know it sounds like misogynistic you're making her overthink and 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 psychologically torturing her but again it's the chasing thing it's the chasing thing and it's the thing that works this is one of the red pill things that again i moved away from the red pill and everything but it's not even red pill it's it's more of the laws of the universe people are attracted to what is hidden because they want discovery Ever since the, the dawn of humanity, humans have had one goal, explore, adventure, discover, and you are taking it away. You are cutting your limbs off. You are cutting every advantage you have off, and then you come and you wonder why she fucking cheats on you with that guy who's a gangster, but he had some mystique to him. He wouldn't, of course, he wouldn't reply to her in six hours because he's busy selling drugs and, and meeting four other women and beating people up and just doing random shit. Now, I'm not telling you be like that person, but I'm telling you, adopt one characteristic that he had and it was the fact that he is actually mysterious because of this one thing, because he was actually busy. Now, how do you actually become busy? Well, you see time as a resource. Currently, it's 3.34 p.m. A lot of you, to put it frankly, a lot of the peasants that may be watching this video with no fucking goals in life may be watching this and simply think, yeah, it's 3.34 p.m. It's my time, 3.34. Maybe thinking, it's 3.34 p.m. I have, you know, there's seven hours left to the day. I can fuck around. The way I think of it is 
there are two hours left until 5.30. There's 120 minutes left until this. I have 120 minutes. These minutes are a resource. I see time as a resource. And so do all these other busy men. They see it as a resource because time is finite. Everybody has the same level of time. And to get ahead of the other people, we need to use time differently. We need to use time as a resource in a way that propels us forward and not just live. There's a difference between living and existing. Okay, there's a difference between existing and actually growing and, and, and grabbing your ball, your goals, your balls by the goals, <laughs> your bo- your goals by the balls. There's a difference. There's a difference between existing, which is what you do, and living for the greater future. And that's what these busy guys do. They fill their days in with things that need to be done so that they achieve things later down the line. And this is the error that all of these red pill scumbags make. You are sitting six hours not replying to her, thinking of how to reply to her, when instead there's a guy out there who's six hours straight working, brutally working on something that will give him a better life down the line. You need to make yourself busy. You need to actually be doing the work and not just pretending. Actually do the work. He's not forcing mystery. That version of you that you want to be, that actually mysterious version of you who's attractive and not just a scumbag who just, uh, let me uh, let me purposely reply 7.4 times more minutes than she did because that's what the red pill gurus said. The red pill gurus are sleaze bags. They are dirt bags. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They know how to stick their dicks in wet holes and that's about it. That's literally about it. But this expands to more than just women. This expands to people in your workplace. When people perceive you as a busy man, they will value your time more. And you will get paid more for your time when you are a busier man. I don't charge 10 bucks an hour for coaching. It's over thousands. I don't charge fucking 30 bucks an hour for any of my product or mentorships. It's, it's, It's high ticket. Because I am actually a busy human being and I do things. My day is always filled with a task, whether it be work, whether it be like going to the gym, whether it be reading, whether it be just breathing and whatever it is, my day is genuinely filled with things. And that's why I cannot reply to women within an hour, within two, within three. My phone has been on do not disturb for the last four, five, six months. I don't open these texting apps. I have one like messages and I make sure like do not disturb if I get a text like twice in a row, only then, if it's like an emergency, only then do I get a notification if it's an emergency. You have notifications on enabled permanently and you see every single one of them, which gives you the space to reply immediately, which does what? It makes people think you are unvaluable. It makes people think you don't value your time. And when you don't value your time, you value nothing in life because what is the most valuable thing? More than money, more than money, more than muscle, more than anything. It's time because with time, time is the catalyst that you can use to build all of these other things, all of them. And when you cut that in half, when you shoot yourself in the foot and fuck your time in the ass, nobody respects you. Not your woman, not your friends, not your business partners, not the people who you want to sell to. Nobody respects you. So what is the solution? Like I said, force yourself to be busy. Force yourself to be busy and find new ventures to partake in. New ventures, new skills to learn. If you're if you are skinny fat, fuck! You shouldn't even be watching this video. You should not even be watching this video. The person who's genuinely be busy, the person who genuinely is that guy, never even clicked on this video and you're fucking here. He never clicked on this video because he's too busy doing what he needs to do. Maybe he's making his own video. Now you're here watching and consuming my fucking content, wasting your time, wasting your time. And nobody's going to tell you this. No other YouTuber is going to tell you you're a fucking donkey if you waste your time and you have shit to do and you're just watching videos for the sake of entertainment. I'm going to lose views. I'm going to lose subscribers. I'm telling you, if you're addicted to my fucking content and you don't do shit with your life, get off my channel. Get off my channel. Nobody's going to speak to you like this. Take new ventures and explore. Go explore how to fucking like go play the flute. I don't care what it is. Go play the flute. Go build some muscle. The main things right now that should matter in your life as a young man is health and fitness and finances. That's it. That's it. And you can focus on all three at the same time. All three at the same time. You can focus on your health by focusing on diet and being in nature and being in the sun and having like drinking water and like that. Basically, that's it. Diet, sleep, exercise. That's your health. And then for fitness and physique, it's the gym. We already know this. And then for money, there's a million different things you can do. But start a new venture. 
Start a new venture. And that's why in Project 10K, I keep you busy. So you don't have to be this kind of person who replies day in, day out to this kind of person. And, oh, girl, I'm, I'm texting. No, 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 no. I keep you fucking busy to get you to the goal of 10K a month within six months. And I know that's not much, but it's a beginner thing. It's something you start with. So you're genuinely busy. You're not going to have free time to bullshit around when you have goals. And that's what Project 10K gives you with a financial goal. It gets you to a financial goal. Fucking bit like with, with physique, get into the gym, learn whatever it is, but get into new ventures, man. Stop being the kind of guy who has unlimited free time because the hard times are coming. As a matter of fact, the hard times have just begun. You already know what's happening. I don't want to speak about, you know, shit, but you already know what's happening in the East, the Middle East, in... I won't go too deep into this because I'm going to get damaged by the, the Jews. <laughs> the world is a very big place, man. There are an unlimited amount of ventures you can partake in. And the, the beginning of all this, the beginning of becoming the ultimate man, the ultimate version of you is to start with mystery. And mystery starts with being busy. Wish not for a lighter load, but for a stronger back.